Enter the platform now. Please select your desired floor. Hey, what's up? It's Mike from Production Crate. Today I was experimenting with some of these new sci-fi materials from Render Crate, and I sort of accidentally came up with this really cool image right here. The best part is I only used two basic shapes and two Render Crate materials. Then with just a little bit of extra love and attention, we were able to push the image a bit further and we came up with this one right here. Finally, I'm one step closer to achieving my dream of living in a dystopian cyberpunk hellscape. So let me show you how I did it. First, you need to go to Render Crate, then to Materials, and then to Metal, and pick whichever one you want. I ended up with Metal Grunge Panels 5 and Metal Grunge Panel 7. I also downloaded a bunch of HDR maps from the Environments category, but in the end I used the Space Nebula environment for some added color. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using Maya and Arnold to build and render my scene because I know it the best, but these ideas are universal. I started by making a few simple cubes for my buildings, and because I was inspired by Blade Runner and Ghost in the Shell and Akira, I wanted to bevel some random edges to give the buildings a futuristic look. My goal here is to create something that could fit as a background mat in like a cyberpunk anime movie or something, so no need to get too detailed here. The materials will do most of the work. I also recommend you don't model any features that are too distinct because these buildings are going to be tiled all over the place and we don't want anything to look too repetitive or noticeable. But if you feel like it, you could model a couple more detailed hero buildings to put closer to the camera as a focal point. So once I had six or seven buildings I was happy with, I used a feature in Maya called Mash to scatter a bunch of copies of my buildings all over the place. I fiddle with some sliders to rotate and scale them randomly, but I tried to keep them roughly in a grid pattern. Whatever program you're using should have a feature like MASH, which allows you to create instances of your geometry. Instances are lighter than just straight up duplicating, so just go crazy and spray it everywhere. You can see here before I even applied my textures, I've already started playing with temporary lights to figure out my final composition. But once I'm happy with that, I started to apply the textures that I downloaded earlier. I use something called Triplanar Projection. Most 3D programs should have a feature like this. It allows you to project textures onto a surface without having to UV map. It also makes the texture seamless so all those cool details will go around the corners and tile perfectly without getting cut off. I spent a lot of time experimenting with each of the sci-fi materials, but in the end I settled with Metal Grunge Panels 5 for the building. One thing that'll really help you break up the simple forms of the cubes is to use the height map as displacement. I crank the intensity way up, much higher than intended, to really get those crunchy details. The goal here is to break up the clean simple lines of the cube as much as possible. Always try to think about scale when you're doing scenes like this. Big, smooth, straight, unbroken lines can make your scene feel small, like a miniature. The same goes for unbroken highlights on shiny objects. Check out this picture of the Walt Disney Concert Hall in LA. At first glance, it feels like it has huge, broad highlights. And if you model this, you might be tempted to just turn up the shine and call it a day. But if you look closely, the highlights are subtly broken up by lots of little panels, which cause the surface to be slightly wobbly. This is what tells your eye that the building is actually pretty massive. Okay, now that we've got all that, it's time for lighting. Depending on the mood you want to portray, you could just slap an HDR in the scene and call it done. But I'm going for something a little more custom. This is an outdoor scene at night, or maybe it's just super smoggy all the time because it's a dystopian cyberpunk hellscape. So I opted for a single light source really far away to represent the sun or the moon. Most 3D programs should have a directional light or something to mimic sunlight. I also cranked up the volumetric fog, like probably way too much. Playing around with color temperature, Lou gave the image a Ghost in the Shell vibe, while orange reminded me of the Las Vegas scenes from Blade Runner 2049. Very tempting, but in the end I went with blue. It was starting to look pretty cool, but something was missing. And suddenly I realized, buildings need windows. So I used a procedural texture called Cell Noise to generate a bunch of little squares. And again, I used triplanar projection to spray it all over the building. I plugged the Cell Noise into the emission channel so that they would glow, and I chose an orangey color to contrast with the blue buildings. To add even more visual interest, I put some area lights below the city at ground level pointing upwards. For these lights, you can go kind of crazy with the colors and just be creative. Maybe you make them all the same color to represent a stark authoritarian future where everything's uniform. Or maybe you pick a ton of different wild colors to represent neon lights like clubs and billboards in the city below. The live action Ghost in the Shell remake went even farther and added neon holograms to the sides of all the buildings. Maybe I'll do that too in the future. If you want to break up the shapes of the city even more, you could go back to Render Crate and download some of these cool city assets to scatter around. I think later on I'll go back and add some of these cranes in key places. You could add some of these spaceship models to the skies above your city, because like maybe in the future we don't fix the smog issue, but we get those cool flying cars we've been promised. At this point, it felt like something was missing. The scene needed a focal point to break up the monotonous, evenly spaced cityscape. I thought back to Blade Runner and I remembered the scenes of the giant Tyrell Corp building that dwarfed the whole city. So I experimented with different shapes. Do I want a sphere, a cube, a pyramid? Should it be floating, 
Should I put this cavily material on it like an Akira? This is always the hardest, most time consuming part of any composition, but also the most fun because all the technical stuff's out of the way and now you can just play with it and be creative. I decided to go with the sphere, but I extruded in a section to give it some more detail. And then I played around with the positioning. I almost went with this floating eye looking down at the city in an imposing way, but it felt too much like the Death Star, so instead I came up with uh, this. Once I knew exactly the layout I wanted and the final camera angle, I finalized my accent lights and added the Space Nebula HDR just for a few more random pops of color. I also had a last minute idea to add more sense of scale and texture by throwing in some smoke textures on a simple plane. Found these on Graphics Crate. I put a few copies around my scene between the buildings. I think they really catch those neon lights nice. If you need to make a moving background like this for a short film or something, you could go to Footage Crate and use some of our animated smoky atmospheres. Or maybe you could do some smoke stacks with this inky black smoke coming out the top. I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier. So that's how I arrived at this first image that I showed you. The next very important step in the creative process is to get up and stretch your legs for a bit, take a break, come back with fresh eyes, preferably someone else's eyes. Seriously, get someone else to look at it and give you some feedback. With some input from the other guys in the studio, I was able to push this project to the next level. It's always the last 20% that makes your project stand out. The other guys at the studio had two main suggestions. Make the sphere in the middle more of a focal point and introduce more imperfections. So I added some glowy orange windows to the cracks between the plates on the sphere. And to add some motion and color variation to the city, I downloaded a bunch of little animated graphics from Footage Crate and used them as neon signs. I made them so small that you can't tell what they are, but I did like the effect so much that I even added larger hero billboards to scatter around the city. The last step was to render in crispy 4K. Or wait, scratch that. Let's go with the ultra-wide aspect ratio of the original Blade Runner. Do some curves adjustments in post, add color correction, maybe a couple flashing red lights so spaceships don't crash into the giant obvious cyberdome thing, and we're done. To make the final shot, I just stood in front of a green screen and tried to look tough while the guys flashed some lights at me. To fake my reflection in the window, we just turned the camera around and filmed the scene from the other side. For the foreground elements, like the interior of the elevator, we used these brand new sci-fi hallway assets from RenderCrate. And for this swiping light bar thing on the outside of the elevator shaft, I just cannibalized it from our satellite model on RenderCrate. So that's it. Pretty simple, right? In the comments, let us know what should happen when the elevator gets to the bottom. Maybe we'll continue the scene. If you try to make a scene like this, be sure to show us your results on all the social medias and make it awesome.